the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our Mass here at St Matthew's. Delighted that we have William, our head server, uh, with us to join in the responses to the Mass and also to share in the sacrament which we are which we are celebrating on your behalf on this sixth Sunday of Easter. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will send to you an advocate to help you. Loving Jesus sometimes can feel easy and natural, and sometimes in difficult circumstances it isn't quite so easy uh, to, to love Jesus and to keep Jesus' commandments. But we have the promise of the Holy Spirit that God will send to us at Pentecost. And as we move into Ascension time this week, so we prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of the Holy Spirit. In order to make sure we are ready for the coming of God's Spirit and ready to receive our spiritual communion this morning, let us call to mind and confess our sins. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate folly. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen let us praise God's glory together A reading.
reading from the book of Acts. Then Paul stood in front of the Apocryphus and said, Antheans, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath of all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live. So they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each and every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an imagined form by the art of an imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Because, because he has fixed a day, one which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of all this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 